We gather acknowledging the Wurundjeri people as the traditional custodians of this land to praise and worship God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Good evening and welcome, everyone. When you get older, time goes very quickly. It doesn't seem all that long ago since we last saw each other. We gather to celebrate the feast of the Holy Family, and we think about our own family and uh, recognize the ways that sometimes we take our own families, members, for granted. So let us ask for healing and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you show us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. You come among us as a human person born into a family. Christ, have mercy. You send your Holy Spirit to unite us to one another in your love. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us give glory and praise to God. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, a God almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, of the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And we gather together with those people who are watching on Zoom and those people who might watch afterwards on YouTube to different church. Let us pray. Father in heaven, creator of all, you ordered the earth to bring forth life and crowned its goodness by creating the family of humanity. In history's moment when all was ready, you sent your son to dwell in time, obedient to the laws of life in our world. Teach us the sanctity of human love. Show us the value of family life and help us to live in peace with all that we may share in your life forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abraham said, O Lord God, what will you give me, for I am to be childless, and the heir of my house is Eliza of Damascus? And Abraham said, you have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. The Lord brought Abraham outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars. If you are able to count them, then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And Abraham believed the Lord. And the Lord reckoned him to him as righteousness. God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. 
No longer shall your name be Abraham, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. God said to Abraham, As for Sarah, your wife, you shall not call her Sarah, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall be bride to nations. Kings of people shall come from her. The Lord dealt with Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had promised. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the time at which God had spoken to him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to his son, whom Sarah bore him. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Now Sarah said, God has brought laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh with me. And she said, Who would ever have said to Abraham that Sarah would bear children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. The word of the Lord. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing to him, sing praises to him. Tell of all his wonderful words. Glory in his holy name. When Abraham obeyed, when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance, and he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, Sarah herself, though barren, received power to conceive, even when she was too old, because she considered God, who had made the promise, to be faithful. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born. As many as, as the stars of heaven, and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. By faith, Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac. He who had received the promises was ready to offer up his only son, of whom he had been told. It is through Isaac that descendants shall be named for you. Abraham considered the fact that God is able even to raise someone from the dead, and figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets. Now God speaks to us through the Son. Alleluia.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought the child Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon blessed them, and he said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. When Mary and Joseph had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. It's interesting that on this first Sunday after Christmas, the church invites us to reflect on family, and some of you, like myself, don't have your own children. And on the, on the other extreme, we've got Len down at the back, who has 12, and 85 descendants from that 12. And some have entered into a relationship with the hope of having a family, but have found them, themselves unable to do so. Or the relationship didn't continue, and they've been left disappointed. Others have had children, but suffer the hurt of having that family broken for reasons over which you have little or no control. Family can be the place where we experience our deepest joys, but also our most profound and lasting hurts. But whatever our situation, we all have connections that bind us to the human race through our mother or father, our brothers or sisters, our uncles, aunts, and cousins. The Feast of the Holy Family is important because it speaks to a universal reality, a reality that all people experience. It's the place where we're nourished physically, emotionally, and spiritually, where we learn how to live with others, learn about community, where we learn to love and forgive, where we acquire our first values and where we're brought into a relationship with God. And all these with varying degrees of success. And it's because this is so that it must necessarily be that family and family life is the ordinary place where God can be found. And perhaps the difficulty in appreciating this fact is because family life is just so ordinary, so ordinary that people don't even think that that is really and even primarily where God is for them. And in all the successes and in all the failures, in all the stress of trying to have deep, loving, understanding relationships, in all the struggles with finances and jobs, housekeeping, illness and schooling, in children growing up and parents growing older, in all the adjustments required by the constant life changes of all the different members of the family. It's in family life with its challenges and joys and sorrows that most of the meaningful reality of life is actually lived out. It's not in one's work or profession or business, not even in one's social life, 
not in making money, not in getting ahead. And in fact, all these things have real meaning only in relation to what they do for the family. However big or small that is. Today's Feast of the Holy Family is about faithful love that looks after the most important people in our lives. We all know that fights and bitterness can wreck families for generations. But if today's feast means anything, it's not about romanticizing how difficult family life can be these days. It's about naming that forgiveness and compassion and kindness are the blocks upon which good family life is built. Without these virtues, family life crumbles. It's not the end, of course, because we can learn to put those in place with those I choose to be in family. But the best way to honour today's feast is to do something about the faithful love it celebrates. I've often been with people on their deathbed when they speak about things that they've left undone and would have liked to have achieved in their life. And it's funny that no one ever says that they wish they'd spent more time at work. No one says that they wish that they'd made more money or had more possessions. But many people say that they wish that they told those that they love how much they love them or that they even love them. We shouldn't assume that our families know about our love for them. If we haven't said it, but if we show it, we should, be, we should always be able to say it as well. So today's feast might inspire you to write a letter, make a phone call, or go and see them, pluck up the courage and tell our family members that we love them. It's too late once you're dead. But there's one other reflection on family that I'd like to share with you today. And the global events of this make me think about something which re with regard to family that Jesus spoke about and Paul reinforced. For Jesus, the family was far broader than his blood relatives. It was those who heard the word of God and responded to it. And I'm sure he wasn't limiting this just to the Jews or even just his followers who would become Christians, but to everyone who by their consciences were responsive to God's call to them to be who they are called to be, striving for goodness and the upbuilding of the human family. And then Paul, some 25 years later, would say that in Christ, there is no longer Jew or Greek, slave or free, man or woman. We are all made one in the one who shows us how to live as one. And these were both quite revolutionary because in that time, blood, clan, tribe and race were what bound people together. And I think COVID has reinforced for us how closely we are connected by how quickly the pandemic has spread. We are indeed one family of humanity. And the temptation and the danger in this time of crisis is that we cut ourselves off from others, blame others, protect our own without adequate concern for the other, to return to behaviours and practices of a very limited view of those to whom we belong. So maybe a lesson that we can learn from the pandemic and from the revolutionary thinking of Jesus and Paul is how are the ways that we can become more united as the family of humanity, especially caring for the forgotten and the least members who are just as important.
being the <clears throat> being the last weekend of the month, um, we use the opportunity to pray for and bless those who celebrate wedding anniversaries. So if you're married in the month of December, would you like to stand? Good. Des and Barbara, Helen and Dan, and Tony and uh, Maureen, and maybe there are people who are watching. My dear friends, why would this noise be? My dear friends, this month you celebrate your faithfulness to each other through the joys and the sorrows, the triumphs and the trials of life. You've supported one another and God has been with you. Let us now turn to God in prayer that he may bless these couples in his love for them. Blessed are you, Lord, King of all creation. You've made us your beloved people and have showered your gifts upon us. With these couples, celebrating their wedding anniversaries. We thank you for their years together. Continue to fill their hearts with love for you and for each other. Grant that as they have lived their lives with one heart and one mind, they may continue to witness to your presence in their marriage. Stretch out your hand upon them and bless them. Bless their children and all their relatives and friends and lead them through this life to eternal joy with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you kindly give a COVID kiss to one another? <laughs> Congratulations. Let us now stand as we profess our faith in the God who loves us. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. It is in this. Christ stands forever at the right hand of God in this season of Christmas. We thank our God for the gift of Jesus and open ourselves to God's word as children of God in our families of love. We pray for us, that as we have to Mary and Joseph, this life of the gift of Jesus, that all parents and children in the bonds of love Peace and faith be strengthened always. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that we may be open to God's mysterious benefits and that we may be always to teach gospel values, especially in our families. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, during this COVID pandemic, that you draw close to all anxious hearts, troubled minds, and businesses who face financial stress and economic heartbreak. Please give us all calmness and wisdom as we move forward out of lockdown to be with each other. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and those who care for them. May your grace and peace carry them through their illness into a time filled with hope. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died recently, especially in Brazil, to the sick and around of you. And for those whose anniversaries occur at this time. 
Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause for a moment as we reflect on our own needs and the needs of those who are dear to us. Lord, hear us. Gracious God, may your favour rest upon the family which you have gathered in the name of your Son. We ask you this and all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, the fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and St. Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and peace through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. From this feast of this awe-filled mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in ours and begotten before all ages. He has begun to exist in time. So that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We take the third Eucharistic prayer and the third acclamation. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this 
in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and his ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the offering of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, Joseph her spouse, the apostles and martyrs, Mary MacKillop, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis our Pope, Peter our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and especially Graham Neal and Pam Tobin and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. O oh, oh God, almighty Father, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. You will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my own peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us to fullness of life.
to ordain the body of Christ. May the blessing of the Lord be upon us as we minister the body of Christ, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Let us stand and pray. Eternal Father, we want to live as Jesus, Mary and Joseph in peace with you and with one another. May this communion strengthen us to face the troubles of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mass on New Year's Eve and on New Year's Day will be at 9.15. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Lord, you care for your people even when they stray. Grant us a complete change of heart so that we may follow you with greater fidelity. Grant this through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace and the joy of Christ to love and serve the Lord. Thank you and have a great week. Sounds like Star Wars. <laughs>